what do you think um, another problem with the Oman is? I think we have several. I guess I think we have many. I would like to, um, I suppose the biggest problem that from my perspective is that we have a tendency to present the Uma as a cohesive one dimensional thing. And the Uma is not a cohesive one dimensional thing. We have, um, most of the mosques, most of the um, organizations that are Islamic organizations are headed by immigrants. So when our media goes to the head of an organization to get information, we are putting on the face of the TV that, um, someone with an accent, someone that most Americans identify as a foreigner, rather than someone who they can identify with as an American. And I think that that's part of the PR problem that the OMA has. I think also that we have a problem with mosques being um, trying to maybe, according to the studies done by CARE, I think it's about 30% of our mosques are trying to, they are trying to um, keep the culture of one ethnicity or one nation. Um, that means that that one third of our mosques or nearly a third of our mosques are excluding everyone who doesn't come from that nation or that ethnicity. And I see this as a real problem. We need our mosques to be user friendly. And that is what I would like to see America, Uma, work on. Um, well, you already gave me the solution, so I will not ask you for the solution. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. um, so, we know that Islamic world has contributed a lot of things to the world, not just. Oh, yes. Right? So, in, in, in a short you know, paragraph, can you explain to me what do you think the advantage of Islamic world, world are for the whole world? I mean, in America and in Latin America. You mean like the printing press? Yes. Okay. <laughs> like the advantage, what, what, I think people need to hear what the, the Islamic world brought to. Well, there's many things that the Islamic world brought to the Western world and to all of the world, um, including most of the classics. We lost them in Greek and in Latin but they were translated into Arabic. And so most of the classics that, of literature that a person thinks of, they have been translated back into Greek and Latin from the Arabic because there was a time when Baghdad was the center of learning. Mm -hmm. And these manuscripts, alhamdulillah, they were preserved there. But most Westerners don't realize that that's how their classics came to them. They came through the Arabic. And I guess another thing that comes from the Islamic world that I have treasured are the Beni Sham horses, the horses of the Bedouins. And Oh, they, they are magnificent and there are very, very few horses in the world today. Um, probably about three to four thousand in Syria, 50 maybe in, in uh, the UAE, and about five, six hundred in this country. And that's it that qualify for that. That's, that's all there are in the world today. 
Well, I think I pointed out a couple of them on on the way. Comparing East and West cultures, what do you think is the similitude? We have many things that are the same. Um, and I think that the East and West cultures are a lot closer in person, especially out in the country, than they are in the big city or on TV. I think we, um, we tend not to see just because if you take the modest dress of a Muslim woman, there are those who cover completely in one country or another country's outfit. And many of us who use combinations of modest dress from many places, there are those who wear the hijab, there are those who don't. And I think for those who don't wear the hijab, you cannot tell walking down the street if you are meeting a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim. You just have no clue. And I don't think that most people realize that. I think they expect for a Muslim to be covered and so they don't recognize the rest. I would say you spread Islam with your life, not with your words. It is your doing. Those of us, especially those of us who live in this country, but all across the world, it is our actions. People see us, they realize we're Muslim, and they see that, um, and they may not see it or know another Muslim. So whatever you do, that is what they think Islam is. So your actions always have to be such that it puts a good portrayal of Islam forward. Okay. Um, you know, in Turkey, you know, this, this is going to be shown in Turkey. Yes. You know, in Turkey, they're banning the hijab into uh, federal places. And yes, including, including some of the, the federal schools, yes. What do you think about that? What will you tell the Turkish woman about that? I don't feel really qualified to give her any advice um, besides that to remember that where she draws the line of modesty is her choice. You know, God gave it to her. So when Allah gives you the right to choose, that's your choice. And that is, that is where I would say the whole crux of the matter has to lie. So the last question is, what do you understand for some of these words? But I think you've been in Muslim for a long time. I think you you know most of these words. <laughs> yeah, I recognize <laughs> the words. <laughs> Allah, the love of Allah, uh, the universe, the world, the prophet, you know, Islamic brotherhood, um, all of these things. Yes, I, I know the words. So I think <laughs> I think you have a good understanding of what they are, so um, is there anything else you want to add? No, I don't think so. I don't. This, this will be shot in Ramadan, so is there anything you want to add for people that will see it in uh, Ramadan time? Just may Allah give all of you a blessed 
and beautiful Ramadan.